All right, so today I'm going to continue on with my uh, installation of my Taco navigation lights, rub rail navigation lights. And this is the kit that I bought. It comes with these, I'll call them belt buckles, which I think are kind of hideous. Uh, so I'm going to try to install them behind my rub rail. They even have the contour of the rub rail stainless steel profile. Uh, so I'm basically going to attempt to drill a hole. And this is uh, approximately three quarters of an inch, more like 11 sixteenths. In fact, it uh, doesn't even fit. The manufacturer didn't even do a real, if you could see the light coming through. They didn't even really do that good of a job of uh, making the hole to fit the plastic bezel. Anyway, uh, let me just show you real quick on the side of the boat. This is, uh, this profile, I actually beat this belt buckle here uh, to fit my profile out of the box. This kit does not fit the one inch stainless steel rub rails. Absolutely does not. You would need to uh, take it to your bench and beat it with a rubber mallet and try to take some of the crown out. And even then you're not gonna get it, uh, not gonna get it perfect. If you can see from the side here, I guess I could have spent some more time trying to perfect it. But I really don't want that on the side of my boat. So in my previous video, I showed everyone how to uh, locate where the rubber rail lights will uh, have to be mounted. Before you drill any holes in your boat, make sure you know where that drill bit's going. Uh, you can see the anchor locker in the background. I was able to stick my head in there and I know that this area is completely clear of any obstruction. I'm using an eighth inch cobalt bit to make a pilot hole. Uh, you cannot use a standard drill bit. You must use cobalt bits for drilling into stainless steel. Before you drill big ho bigger holes in your boat, you want to make sure that you can also see your pilot. You can see where we're coming through right here. Here I'm using a cobalt step bit to drill the hole the rest of the way and you can see I'm also lubricating the bit with some oil and I have a little catch pan there to catch any oil or shavings. The goal when drilling stainless steel is to use a slow drill speed. You're trying to keep the bit cool so that's uh, also the reason for the lubrication. So steady pressure, slow speed, lots of lube and you'll make a clean cut. Here I'm test fitting the bezel from the light to make sure it fits uh, well in the hole. Okay, we're just going to clean up the edge of this hole with a half round file. Here I'm using a 5 8 inch drill bit to go the rest of the way through the hole so that we can install the nav light. Okay, 5 8 hole is the ticket. Here I'm removing all the screws in the rubber rail from the seam all the way up to the bow plate, and I'm going to skip over the one nearest the hole. Uh, once you drill that hole, you really weaken that metal, so you're going to need a way to support that rail when it's loose. Uh, having a helper would be ideal. Uh, I'm going to end up using a large jack stand to hold it. Ideally, I should have taken the entire rubber rail off. But since I didn't have any helpers, I Rube Goldberg a support system with a jack stand and a step platform. We need to relieve some space for that uh, bezel in the rubber rub rail. So we're going to trace it out with a magic marker. We're going to use a fresh blade and our utility knife to trace out the perimeter and then a sharp chisel to actually make the relief cuts. Over at the bench, I'm attaching an extension wire to the nav lights and I've uh, crimped uh, a piece of marine power supply onto it and here I'm soldering it and later I will heat shrink it. Uh, you want to do this uh, off the boat where you're nice and comfortable and then bring it over to the boat to install it. Here I'm fishing the wires through the plastic portion of the rub rail uh, before I do any caulking. 
Uh, had I done the caulking first, I would have made a mess uh, of all that wire. As I apply your favorite marine grade silicone to the socket that you've created in the rub rail. Uh, and don't forget to put a dab in each one of the screw holes. Here I'm tucking the nav light into the rub rail for the last time. If you don't like how your silicone is bedding up, uh, feel free to put some more in at this time. The last thing to do here is to put the screws back in. Just be careful right around the light area. That rub rail is very fragile where the big hole is drilled. Uh, you want to make sure you ease that back into its original position and snug up your screws. Clean up any residual caulk with a rag and some lacquer thinner or some acetone and get ready to admire your work. Give you a close up. How's that for clean looking? That step bit and the file did a perfect job of cutting that hole. Very, very happy. Okay, we're here in the anchor locker and you can see where the light fixture comes through the rub rail into the locker. Uh, we're going to run that wire across the front. You can see the OEM navigation light there and the wire is heading to that. We're going to use uh, that feed, obviously. And when you come around here, you can see the starboard light sticking through. I'm using Deutsch connectors to attach the nav lights to the wiring harness. And here you can see I'm using the special end crimper uh, to put the ends on. Push these through till they click. click. Both in there. Now we just need the keeper. Get it started and push that until it clicks. Ports on the Deutsch plugs are numbered, so you could line up your wires, but you could also do it manually by just plugging the two ends together and lining the wires up. Push the wires in until you hear a click, and then insert the keeper, and this plug is done. I'm going to connect the pigtails now and do a test before I wire tie everything into place. Looks good. There we go. You're going to have existing wire tie anchors glued up to the bottom of the hull that you could use. Uh, where there aren't any, you're going to have to put some new ones. And I highly recommend wiping the area down with some acetone first. I even use some of the 3M uh, tape prep solvent uh, on the areas where I was sticking them up. Likely a few areas that are really hard to reach so I suggest mounting those tabs onto the wire first with your wire tie uh, in a place where you can reach them and then slide your hand in there and paste them into place. Last look, we've got all of our wires wire tied, secured. We're able to use some of the OEM connectors some additional ones in ourselves. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight lines.